This phased reopen plan has a lot of implications for our local businesses and economy. For a deeper look, we're joined now by University of Regina Economics Professor Jason Childs. Jason, there's a lot of information in this plan. What mm -hmm. stood out to you the most? Uh, I, I thought the uh, the phase process was was quite appropriate and and moderately detailed and thought out. Uh, there's some things missing, but that'll get filled in, I suspect, as we go. This is a really cautious sort of take a step, take the temperature, check how things are going, take another step. The first two steps are, are maybe a little closer together than some people would like, but uh, the, the fact that there are no dates on the last three steps is uh, an indicative of that approach. Every single industry has been affected by this. Which ones do you think will take the longest to recover? I think a lot of the personal service stuff will take the longest to recover, not because of the restrictions, but because of changes in people's behavior. I think it'll be a long time before you see people going to get their nails done the same way or some of those more uh, involved personal services. Do you think that's because they're just spending money differently now or because their habits have changed because we've been out of the habit? I think it's a little bit both. Uh, their habits will change because we're out of the habit. Their habits will change because they're much more aware of the contagion risks of the, and the contagion risk, quite frankly, has changed. And this has taken a bite out of a lot of people's wallets, so they're not going to be spending them the same way. People are going to be holding uh, their reserves a little closer. Speaking of holding on to money, governments have been talking about massive deficits, both provincial and federal. What is a government's role when it comes to pumping money into an economy during times like these? It, it, that's a mixed bag. Uh, there's a lot of debate in the discipline about that and how much can actually be done without uh, starting to do some real damage to the economy. Um, when you restrict uh, the productive capacity of an economy but keep pumping money in, as we're seeing through both the Bank of Canada, the federal government, and the provincial government to a lesser extent, there's a real risk of inflation. And we've, we haven't seen it yet, but I think we're about to start seeing it, particularly at the grocery store. So as money keeps getting injected into this system and there's nowhere for it to go, there's nothing to spend it on, the, the prices of the few things we are producing are going to rise. Okay, so all that being said, how does a government dig out of a massive deficit when all this is over and life goes back to quote-unquote normal? Right. That is the, the short answer there is time. Uh, you're not going to get out of this hole all at once or quickly. Uh, the hope is that you're going to see revenue recover moderately quickly once all the restrictions are lifted and you're going to see uh, expenses stabilize at a lower level than they're at now. But that's going to take years to, to work itself through. We're not going to get out of this hole. We, we could lose, you know, potentially 20 percent of government revenue this fiscal year. That's not a gap we're going to close quickly, and particularly if we're going to be cautious and careful with how we deal with the, the business side of it and the, the contagion side of it. Jason, you and I have talked before about the impact of COVID-19 on oil prices, and that was well before things tanked the way that they have. As we see our province and other provinces start to talk about reopening the economy, will that change anything when it comes to oil? I think it will. It'll it'll increase demand. Uh, we're not huge players in the West Texas intermediate market in terms of consumption. Uh, we're more involved in terms of production. But as as we start to reopen the economy and as campgrounds and things like that reopen, but interprovincial travel be, it remains uh, strongly recommended against, and and international travel just isn't on the on is it isn't in the cards. I think you're going to see a lot of driving holidays. You're going to see a lot of people. Um, sticking moderately close to home doing day trips, which means buying gas. So I think we're going to see some positive pressure on gasoline prices, if not on oil prices. Any final thoughts, Jason? Uh, it's a good first step. There's a lot of work left to be done, and we're a long way from out of this yet. Thanks so much for this. Thank you. Jason Childs is a professor of economics at the University of Regina.